Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to a regularly scheduled meeting of the Penfield Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, this meeting is being video recorded and is also being broadcast live on the Town of Penfield's website, www.penfield.org, uh, on the Town of Penfield's Government Access Channel 1303, and on streaming media devices Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. You can search Penfield TV in your device's app store and you should know it is free. Um, if you'd like to address the board on any public hearing matter tonight, there's gonna be specific public participation uh, opportunities for each matter. After the board responds to the application with its concerns and questions. Um, anyone that's viewing the meeting at home and wants to comment or ask a question can do so in two manners. One is by calling 340-8771 uh, or posting a comment or question online also through the website www.penfield.org. Um, Tonight's meetings, we're gonna start with our work session. We'll take care of approving the minutes from prior meetings and take care of any tabled items. We do have a couple today to take care of. Um, and then after we've done the work session business, we'll proceed directly into the public hearings, which will be for tonight's new applications. We'll ask the applicant to come up and give us name and address and then most likely the board member that's assigned as lead on a particular application will walk the applicant through. We do have very thorough written applications submitted by everybody, we usually do get good thorough ones with the help of staff um, and we've read them, we've, we're, we're prepared to talk about the item and I don't say that to limit anybody's conversation or any presentation at all. Just want you to know that we've always found that a little bit more efficient to be able to walk people through the applications uh, and get kind of get, get to the cut to the chase, if you will. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll look for comments, either as I said, electronically or in person. Um, and then we will proceed to discuss environmental issues and then the merits of each application. Every meeting we like to point out that we think the town does a good job of making sure people in the community are aware of what applications are being heard. How does the town do that? Well, it sends postcards to people that live within a certain number of feet of the property. Uh, it posts the agenda on the website. It posts the agenda here at town hall. And then also perhaps most visible is it makes the applicant put the signs up in the, on the property. So when you're driving by, you might catch your attention. Hey, something's going on there, let me call and find out why. All of these things are designed to get people to come in here um, and let us know of any questions or concerns they have about an application. Those are the things that we need to know so that we can do our job uh, better and more fully. So uh, having said that, I'd ask everyone to rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, the only other thing I want to point out tonight, we usually, and we do have five board members, but one of uh, our members is not able to be here tonight, so any vote that's taken tonight in order to carry has to have, uh, has to have, still has to have three votes. But I guess two to two, everyone here probably realizes that wouldn't pass. So, but I thought I should say that anyway, Andy. Yep. All right. So let's go to the approval of the minutes from the February meeting. Uh, we've all been given them, had a chance to go over them. Can make I have a, a motion. motion on? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve as written. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to approve the minutes and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, the, the next are tabled applications. We have the RG&E that's been on our agenda, I don't know, six or eight meetings at least, I guess. Maybe it seems like longer. They're still working on it, we're told. Uh, or are they done? Have they? No, nope, they're still working, but they decided to withdraw at this time. Okay, and that's gonna be without prejudice, 
right? Well, they're just with, withdrawing they're the just application, withdrawing. and when they get oh. their project closer to where they want to be, they'll reapply. I guess what I meant then is if, let's say they happen to be ready next month, they still can come in even though, because we didn't make a decision, usually we have a rule, if there's a decision, you gotta wait a year right. to come back in, but that wouldn't apply. Okay, great, so that was easy enough. Uh, the next tabled application, I think the folks are here, for 60 Hampstead Drive, and there's some new information on that as well, so. Hello. Good evening, members of the board. So, uh, okay, we submitted our, uh, the requested documents a little bit close to the deadline. I'm sorry about that. But, um, so as of right now, we have everything that the board requested and just asking still for that variance. Okay. So uh, what I'm holding here is a plot map. <clears throat> that uh, shows, this is probably the one you got a couple hours ago, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, this is the updated one, yep. Yep, and it shows where you'd like the outbuilding to be yep. in relation to the property lines and the conservation easement, the, um, also the drive leading up to it, as well as depicted on this. And then I think as well, we did get a uh, <clears throat> statement from your neighbor. I don't yes. know if it's, is that on the yeah. drive there? Yeah, it's there. Yep. They, they, they did get a statement signed that the neighbor was okay with the driveway. Yep, spoke to him at length and he's yeah. totally fine with that. And you've, you've given, by giving him that document to sign, you give him permission to use the driveway yep. Yep. to access his pool or whatever other purpose. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> All right, any other questions from the board on this? I don't... Yeah, I actually have a, um, just, just a couple of observations that okay. I wanted to make. So sure. I did have an opportunity to drive back around. Um, we had originally had a really good conversation when you were here last time and you had agreed that due to the pure size of the building, it would, it would present certainly a change to the flavor and the feel of the neighborhood. And you had agreed to downsize it, I think like 20% or so. And my understanding is you have now changed your mind. You do not wish to reduce the size. Yeah, we talked to the architect, and the architect said if you shrink it, it will shrink the room and the trusses and everything. He's like, it's better to keep it the same size. Yeah, I understand there would be a need to redesign it, but again, having opportunity to drive around the neighborhood, um, if we're going to be honest, that's a massive structure to put in your backyard in comparison with your neighbors. So if you drive around, there's, you know, it, it, I mean, have you had a chance to talk to neighbors on the other side? They realize that. I mean, it could change the flavor of the neighborhood a little bit and the look it's and feel. It's just us and, what, and the neighbor that we have the letter from. Nobody else can see it. It's all the way in the back, all the way in the woods. And he's aware of this building that's going to be going up. I actually spoke to him today. He's totally fine with it as long as, you know, it's not on his property. It wasn't referring so much to the neighbor on the one side who I know you've spoken to. What I was referring to is the neighbor with the neighborhood. If you, if you drive around, there's no other structures that are that large especially as an outbuilding. So uh, again, just to the board, we would be so somewhat setting a precedent. Are we going to allow other folks within the neighborhood to put buildings up that size? And you know, how would they feel if suddenly there were five or six or 10 homes with buildings that size versus is just that, yours? Uh, fifth, number 56, they have a large... Uh uh, yeah, I did take a look, that, but that pool building is integrated in such a way that it, we're, we're not really comparing apples to apples. While it is a large structure, it's more incorporated. So I just want to make sure you've had a chance to have the conversation and your neighbors are aware of just how large the structure is you're putting in. To that area, it's not that large. It's going to match the house. It's not going to be like an ISO or anything. It's going to match brick, stone, and it's going to look exactly like the house. It's more like on a slope, so it's not like at eye level where you see, you know, our house, then you see that thing, it's more down. I feel like it's not as much like, whoa, at your, in your face. Do you happen to know what the difference, the variance of the, of the, the slope is? So f from w where the house is to where you're putting the outbuilding? Is the elevation difference 10, 15 it feet, do you know? It drops down, yeah. So we have a full walkout basement, maybe like an eight foot drop maybe. Maybe okay, not. so the overall height of the building would be eight to 10 feet below if it were next to the house. Okay. Yeah. All right, um, that was really the only comment that I had. I guess one comment I had is now that we have a, a plot plan that shows exactly where this is, I know one of the, I think the topics was 
you couldn't push the barn farther from your property line on the side because of the conservation easement, is, is that correct? Now that we have that delineated on a map, what's preventing us from eliminating one of the variances you need and pushing it farther from the sideline, or at least making it less of a variance? Well, we want to keep the yard, keep a bigger yard for the kids and all that. Because it's basically on the other side, it's all woods over there. There's all, there's, all there is is deer over there. <laughs> right. Oh, no, I, I understand. But when you look at the number of variances you're asking for, you know, our job as a board is to say, what is the least amount of variances that can get the job done? And based on what we're seeing here, there's alternatives where this could come a little bit farther out, especially since you're asking for a taller structure, a larger structure. Um, you're asking for a lot of variances here. So that's why I'm just, you know, last time we met, you were looking and saying, okay, I could downsize it. Now we're back to full sizes we originally looked at. So I'm just curious, you know, is there opportunity to move this farther from the side setback line so it's less of a variance? Now that we have it marked, and we, I mean, you know, the surveyor marked it, we know exactly where it is, we know where the conservation easement is, you can butt right up to the edge of that conservation easement as well. I guess we could do 10 foot, I wouldn't want to go more than that from the property line. Just want Andy, to would that the, eliminate the variance if they moved? <clears throat> no, the minimum setback for a, a building that size is 50 feet. It's 50 foot. Okay. So it's talking about uh, eliminating what then? 10 feet from the variance? Well, basically, we were going to be five foot from the property line with a size of a house, basically. Yeah. Just, just to kind of continue with the comments about the uh, variances. So you're requesting three variances, which in and of itself isn't, we see that often enough that I wouldn't say three is a crazy number to ask for, but it's the extent of the variances that's the issue. You're, you're, the building size is double what the code allows. Um, it's 50% taller than the code allows. And then it's 90% closer to the property line than the code allows. So it's not the three to me as much as it is the extent of what you're requesting which is why, honestly, one of the very first things we talked with you about when you came in was, why does it have to be so big? And you gave reasons, but I, as George pointed out, I thought you also said you're willing to shrink it so that the variance request is not nearly as much as it was, and I think that's what Andres pointed out a few minutes ago. Uh, so moving the building in, five, five feet, I think you said, you okay, that reduces one variance. Uh, and I totally understand that on one, you got all woods, so it's not going to bother anybody there. And then on this side, you have a neighbor that said he's okay with it. Yeah. Great. Um, but those aren't the only uh, factors that, that we have to consider. Uh, the whole neighborhood we have to consider. I'm not aware that there's another outbuilding in that neighborhood that's double the size. Uh, whether or not it can be seen, I, that you raise a good point. Maybe it can't, it's not as visible, um, but still just the fact that it's that large in that particular area, I'm not aware of it. I don't know if you are. Well, nobody has a lot this big there anyway. All the lots are real small there. Well, that actually make it, may make it more of a, a, a reason to not allow a variance that, that large. I, I don't know if they're half acre or a little bit more than a half acre lot or not. So I guess, I, you, you've, by the way, I, I do want to thank you for the, you've done the homework. This has been on two or three times, and we've asked you to check this out or get this, and you did. You know, you went out and you got a, and I'm sure it wasn't cheap, you got a survey done. Um, you, you spoke with your neighbor, and you addressed that situation. Um, but I, I would just ask again, I want it to be clear before we take any action here. Um, uh, you want the building. That's understandable. You explained why you want to use it. Um, but I, I'd like to hear one more time from you why it has to be as large, why it has to be, <laughs> as opposed to why you want it to be. Uh, well, we have a large RV, and uh, the RV is a 50-foot, so we want to put it in there. So that's basically what we need for the RV. 
Yeah, but we discussed last time that there would still be the ability to shrink the footprint and, and lower the size and still be able to accommodate the RV. So again, I'm, I, I, I'm not clear on why, in, other than the architect saying, hey, listen, I've already drawn it up this way, would, would require effort to, to, to shorten it. And cost. And cost, uh, uh, admittedly. Yeah. But I mean, it just it, it but it's it felt as though we had a pretty good agreement, and we agreed you would reduce, and then you agreed you would get us these drawings, and you did bring us the drawings, but you kind of backed out of our previous agreement, so it's kind of a, a bit of a challenge now. Yeah, I understand. I understand. And if I recall correctly, the top space, which is one of the reasons why you need the height variance, yeah. was to have a. Uh, a room where, where almost like a playroom for your children? It was just basically another storage area. Or like in a storage said that area. Uh, once you shrink it, mm -hmm. it shrinks that room basically by, no, I by get a it. lot. I basically get it. you're taking the middle of it, you're taking the middle of it out. Yeah, yeah. So that's okay. why he's saying it should stay like that. If we want the upstairs space, which we do. All right. But would the RV fit in there without the storage? up on the top yeah all right well i appreciate your candor okay anything else from the board i know this is a uh, tabled matter so it's not uh, the public hearing anymore but all right okay so again <laughs> because we're about to take a vote and i just want to make sure you folks we have four people here we need three in order for this to be approved so you're sticking with your original request for that square footage. If you want to go on the hall and talk, go we'd, right we'd ahead. We'd like that. Yeah, we'd like that square footage. We can you like as originally presented. Okay. Very good. Should start with the yes. environmental then? Yeah, so in, in, regarding the secret, I'd say it's a type two with no further action necessary. Okay, so we have a, mice, a motion under seeker to declare it a type two. Any? I'll approve. Uh, I'll second. We'll have a second on that. Any further discussion on the seeker? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I don't know if you want to take them one at a time um, on the uh, variances or. Well, I mean, I think at this point, I don't know. We need to. We've got it on the record earlier. I don't know. If we need to go through it, but um, it might be beneficial for perhaps Dan in this case for you to okay. make the recommendation. Sure. Sure. Um, Understanding uh, that the issue that we're grappling with here is simply the size of the uh, variance we request uh, and uh, for, the, for the square footage. Uh, I think you've addressed the uh, concern with the neighbor and you've agreed to, to make that uh, a little less of a concern by moving it over somewhat toward the, uh, the easement line. Um, but uh, what I'm troubled with is, again, just a double the size when the primary purpose for this is going to be the RV, which I think is a good purpose. But you don't need that extra square footage in order to achieve that purpose. Um, we are under an obligation to, to strive to grant the uh, smallest variance that will achieve the purpose of the applicant. Um, so I think a variance to a lesser degree um, is something that would achieve the purpose of the RV and probably something that would have support. But I also, it's your property and it's your right to make the request that you want. Um, so on the variance for the square footage, I would make a motion to deny that because I just think it's too large. The, the size of the variance is too much. Um, we do have other outbuildings in the area, but none that I'm aware of that are double the size allowed. Uh, and I do think it would have, even though the neighbor's okay with it, it would have an effect on the uh, neighborhood potentially in terms of other applications coming in. Um, so that's, that would be my motion on that particular variance. Do you want to uh, make a motion to deny without prejudice? Um, Sure, I'm, 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 I'm more than willing to. Possibly, I don't know, just a thought. No, that's fine. I, I'm, I'm willing to uh, do that. 
um, to make the, make the denial without prejudice so the folks can come back in uh, at a time uh, less than one year, which is the typical rule. You guys heard me mention about that before. Um, and, and, and honestly, uh, in terms of the 50% taller, I think that the evidence shows that the reason it's that height is again because of the uh, extra storage that they want. Um, and if I'm wrong about that, somebody let me know. Um, if you need a height variance in order to the, accommodate the RV, and I'm mistaken about that, then, then let me know. If the height variance is based solely upon the desire to use the top for storage, um, then I don't think you've met the, the, the burden for, the, for that as well, because the RV, will you'll be able to get it in there without that height variance. Um, so I'd make a motion. My motion would be to deny that aspect as well. The setback, um, I, I am, uh, I, I would make a motion to approve that, but may end up being moot in any event. Because I think that variance would be based upon the current proposed size and height. So um, that would be my motion. I'll well, second your motion. Um, okay. I, I, I agree with it. I think I think for this, the, the size of the property, or I guess not size, but the size of the structure um, is, quite large. I mean, these are the kind of things that we see, you know, when there's much larger properties or, you know, we're looking for a large, uh, you know, a larger barn out and, you know, when we look at like some of those ones on Plank Road that we've done or, all, or elsewhere out there where they've been this large, but on larger pieces of property and they've also haven't required the size setbacks and the height setbacks uh, or the height um, variances. And so I, I think, you know, that's my struggle is the size of this. I didn't have a problem necessarily with the side setback um, as I did for just the size of it. Right. All right, any more, excuse me, any more comments from the board? Okay, uh, the, uh, I, what I would, Andres, you made me think, we, we may very well have granted variances for outbuildings double what's allowed, but further out East Penfield, Not much, much greater acreage for mm -hmm. the lot. And keeping with the and in keeping look and feel the of the yeah. other properties, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we have a motion to deny two of the variances and grant the one. Uh, any further discussion? All right, all those in favor of that motion? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, I'm sorry, folks. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Okay. So let's go then to tonight's applications. May we have the first one, Andy. Thomas Hines, 3380 Atlantic Avenue, Penfield, New York, 14526. Requests approval for area variances under section 250-14.3 of the code to allow an existing detached garage with less setback than required under section 250-5.1-F1 of the code and a storage shed with less setback than required under section 250-5.1-F12B of the code at 3380 Atlantic Avenue. The property is currently or formerly owned by Thomas Hines and is zoned RA-2, SBL number 110.03-1-13. This is application number 23Z-0010. Okay, may we have your name and address, please? Yes, Tom Hines, 3380 Atlantic Ave, Penfield. Okay, I'm sure Laura will have some questions for you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Um, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Good. That's uh, always an easy one. I think. Yeah. <laughs> so you start out. Uh, if you want to just a little bit more about what you're specifically looking to do okay. and what the purpose is of your shed. Okay. So it's basically a storage shed. Um, my existing garage is a one car garage and right now it's not a garage. It's <sighs> pretty much for my lawn equipment and lawn more. Uh, so I'm looking to put the shed over in the um, north uh, west corner of my lot, um, pretty much in a, uh, to match my home and, and the garage itself. Uh, it's where I have, the proposal is within um, the 10 foot um, setback. 
Um, and the reason I'm requesting this variance is I want to keep it in line with my existing border. The garage is also within the setback. The, the garage was there when I bought it. And so really, this is for aesthetics more than anything else to make it in, in um, line with my, with my property. Okay, yeah, I think that there's one other image where it shows the garage and that stain, that yeah. garage is stained. Yeah. Detached garage, adding the shed. Yeah. What are you going to use for the shed? It's going to be storage. Just Gra storage. Uh, lawnmower equipment, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned the reason why this location is really to keep in the sight line of the garage, to keep mm -hmm. everything consistent. Yeah. There was um, one of your neighbors. Can you explain? So a neighbor submitted... So, yeah, I had them, they um, signed a letter for me that they were okay with it. They are in the, um, that northwest corner set back, um, and then we are separated by some wooded area. Okay. Right? And so they are, um, they are fine with it. The letter said something about adjoining the properties. It, this is all staying on your okay. property, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I was just, did anyone nope. else catch it in the letter? It was a little bit confusing the way that I was. Yeah, I think I, the, the way it maps out, I, I think it'll be, three to four feet to my property line and not the 10, the north, the north property line. Okay. Um, Andy, you didn't put the percentages on the, ap the application this time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do better next time. Um, <clears throat> what other questions? I didn't really have. I, actually, I, I've got one. Yeah. Why, I guess, what's preventing you from just adding on to the side of your existing garage? Um, I mean, just, you know, since instead yeah. of building a separate structure, putting an addition onto the side of it. Yeah, I for guess the, the property itself and how, how I want it appeal, I think. Okay. Yep. Uh, I have a question on the materials for the shed. Yep. Is it, will it look like the same materials as the house? How exactly. Are you? Yep. So same siding, same windows, everything's going to be. Yeah, you know where I was going with it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I redid the whole garage and house when I bought it. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the property, but I, um, you know, my goal is to make it nice and, and, uh, appealing roadside. All right. I, uh, I love your, the, you did a great job with it. <laughs> I don't see any comments submitted through the website, nor do I see anybody on the phone waiting to uh, call. Any, any further questions from the board? Anyone in the audience care to speak about this application? Okay. Can you drop your mic down? Drop my mic only when I'm done. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me of that. Okay, so then let's proceed with the consideration. Yeah, first I'd like to do Seeker. So uh, it's a type two, I'd make a motion as a type two action pursuant to Seeker. I'll second it, requiring no further review. Okay, so we have a motion by Lord to declare it a type two action, a second by Andres. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And now the merits. And then I would go ahead and uh, make a motion to approve this based on, you know, based on the placement of what you're talking about here. It is very much in line with the character, that, that area. It's on a busy street. Um, I think that it makes sense. You have the neighbor's approval and okay written consent for that. Um, and the variances, although I don't have the percentages in front of me, wow. are not Jeez. not too uh, too um, too great of of consideration. So, so Laura, we would also consider the one for the the existing one for the garage rolled into that, correct? Uh, sure. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> kind of like retrofit. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, the existing garage I'm reading here is a, requesting a variance of 24.9 feet from the uh, minimum 30 feet. But they, I'm sorry, how long has that garage been there? Oh, 1960, according to the Yeah, because when they came out to check the site, they said, oh, by the way, your garage also is <laughs> yeah. not within okay. the So that's really just bringing it into conformity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion to approve for the reasons stated. Did we get a second on that? Second. Second by George. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. I love that house. Mm -hmm. It's like the cutest little house I want to go in. I gotta ask him for a tour. Okay, go ahead with the uh, next one. Benjamin Amick, <clears throat> 70 Seabury Boulevard, Webster, New York, 14580. 
request approval for an area variance under section 250-14.3 of the code to allow a storage shed with less setback than required under section 250-5.1-F1 of the code at 70 Seabury Boulevard. The property is currently or formerly owned by Benjamin and Nirvana Amic and is zoned R-1-12, SBL number 093.02-2-62. This is application number 23Z-0011. All right, if we can have your uh, names and Good address, afternoon. please. My, my name is Benjamin Amic. This is my wife, Nirvana Amic, from 70 Seabury Boulevard. Okay. Um, 4580 Webster. Yeah. And I'm going to, uh, I was going to try to describe the shape of your property, but, you know, a That's picture's tough. worth a thousand words, I think. It's if like we, a baseball diamond. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> so we got that. And in the, uh, let's say the upper left-hand corner, there's a drawing there of where the proposed shed is gonna be, yep, right there. So now if everyone has seen that, can we bring up the aerial photo, Andy, because I wanna see, make sure everybody sees all the trees around the area and then sort of the rest of the yard because we'll ask you questions about why it has to go there. Okay, everybody all right with leaving that one up? You can make that a little bigger for 60 year old eyes. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so um, although this doesn't depict where it is, I think we saw it from the survey, just mm -hmm. a little bit over that shadow where that arrow is. All right, so um, why do you have to have it in that location as opposed to somewhere else on your property where you, it might be in compliance? Um, Thank you for the opportunity for us to speak. Um, so essentially for us, um, that area particularly there, um, in all honesty works best for us um, just because it continues with a nice flow for our children and our dog to play in the yard without interrupting halfway through the property where the shed potentially could go. Um, and then further, we have a very busy neighborhood even though it's a small street, but there are plenty of people who walk from um, apartments that are close by. And I do think uh, overall that if we did potentially essentially hide the shed in that area just because it is behind those trees, it would not be such an eyesore as well for the community with people walking through. Um, and that would be the, the biggest reason is flow of the property for our kids to not have any disruption in there, play around the yard as well as the dog. And then overall, I think it would look nicer for the community as a whole. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And I'm looking again at the aerial photo and if you were to put it um, in the lower right hand, it would be totally exposed to a lot of your uh, neighbors. Um, Andy, I hate to bother you, but can we bring the survey up again? Yep. Wow. So um, you have trees on two sides of, of that. Uh, would you be willing to put them on the street side as well, if we asked you to plant a couple trees. There's, there's already some trees on the front. All right, go back the, to the photo then, maybe I missed those. Please go back to the photo. Oh, street view. <laughs> They're not that lush. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. that little area right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, we could always yeah. plant more. We yeah, I'm just looking yeah. to try to shield the view from the street as well. It's not that, honestly, I mean, those, it's not that big a deal, but if you are, got. Those are trees also just two yeah. years old. They okay, yeah, the, uh, those will actually do the job then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, once they get a little more time to grow in, yeah. yeah. So, so what are you using the shed for? Just for storage. There's with two two boys in the house, <laughs> lot, lots of toys outside, bicycles. I thought you were going to say you're going to store the boys in there. <laughs> well, <laughs> <you know. laughs> there is rough times, but not for that definitely. <laughs> okay. No, uh, just most because of the equipment, nothing else like. And for the storage for the toys for them and stuff like that, Lawn because everything is sitting now in the garage and. Just because of that. Okay. Um, all right, any other questions from the board? Um, w what kind of the construction material will it be built to look like the house, match the house? It, exactly, it would be the same, same almost material, same color of the house trim and everything else with windows. All right, I'll remind uh, everybody watching that they can call with comments on any of these applications, 340-8771 or through the Penfield.org website. I don't see 
any electronic comments or anybody on the phone. Anyone in the audience care to speak about this application? Okay, great. Then we will consider, proceed with the consideration. First part is the environmental, I'd uh, make a motion to declare this a type two action under seeker. I'll second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so I'm gonna make a motion to approve the application on its merits. Um, I think the, uh, while we did have a thorough and, uh, application justifying it, the picture really um, shows that this spot for uh, setback reasons and others really uh, the best place for this shed to go. Um, nowadays a shed is almost needed on all of our property, so I don't think there's any issue on that. Uh, it will be shielded uh, by the foliage, so there's really not any concern to a uh, aesthetic qualities of the neighborhood. Uh, which does have other sheds as well. So for all of those reasons, I'd make a motion to approve the variance request. I'll second. All right, we have a motion to approve and a second. Any further discussion? I'll even, I'll go on and say, you know, the, the unique shape of this lot, the fact that there really is only three property lines for this, there's really no, you know, rear yard per se property line, um, makes it, you know, somewhat unique. And the fact that this house is only 30 feet from the back property line, so you take a 10-foot shed and a 10-foot setback, it's almost right up against the side of the house. This probably is the largest space to put the shed. Yep, right. Good point. Good point. All right, so we can add that as well to the minutes. Um, any, anything else? All right, a motion to approve and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So Good luck. Thank you. Time. Appreciate You're welcome. It. Jonathan Davis, 4 Forest Grove Court, Penfield, New York, 14526. Requests approval for an area variance to allow a taller fence than permitted under section 250-7.1-D1I of the code at 4 Forest Grove Court. The property is currently or formerly owned by Jonathan Davis and Alana Thompson and is zoned R-1-20, SBL number 124.15-1-69.7. This is application number 23Z-0012. All right. Perfect. You want to give us your names, please? Uh, John Davis at 4 Forest Grove Court. Alana Thompson. Thank you. Um, one thing I think we want to note here beforehand, it was advertised as, I think, technically section, fell under D, um, of the code and we're probably going to push more towards uh, this is section E and the difference is under the fencing um, the town did new fencing ordinance or I guess local law uh, beginning of the year uh, which you're probably not aware of because mm -hmm. the, you fall into this now um, where D uh, dealt with um, being a fence in a residential and then you're more falling under E which is a which is uh, deer fencing um, which is one slight difference in the code, but um, we'll be just, you know, that's more direction that we're going in in terms of um, you're falling under, with, with, the, with this section, it's, uh, you can't have a fence in the front yard that's, that's a deer fence. Um, fence can't be any more than eight foot. Uh, that's basically the code. Um, has to be 75% open in a sense when you look through it, air, and you can see through it like a mesh. Mm -hmm. um, at least 75% of that, um, and it's designed to enclose fruit, vegetable, orchards, things, things like that. So that's more the direction where this one falls, and I think where, the, where originally it said um, D1, we're actually going E um, for this. I think that's accurate, right? Yeah, and if you don't mind me just adding Please. a little bit to that. One, one of the, you know, uh, the, the sections of the code can get pretty technical, but one of the important things is that when we publish the notice to the, to the world that the application is going to be heard. We, we cite the section that's uh, in dispute, if you will. Mm -hmm. And here we cited D, Andres correctly in my mind anyway, points out that it's really E because this is a deer fence per your own letter of intent. Um, but I still think that we're okay. We've met the notice requirements, due process and all that stuff because really, at the end of the day, this comes down to the height mm -hmm. of this of this fence. That would be the issue, whether it's a deer fence or just a fence you want to put in your 
front yard that's higher than three feet. So the height is the issue. As Andres pointed out, and your application makes clear, the fence is gonna be constructed in the manner of a, that a deer fence must be. So that's not an issue. The only issue, and, and it's less than eight feet, so that's not an <laughs> issue because it's a deer fence. The only issue is the code says no deer fences in your front yard uh, and you wanna put it in your front yard. Right. So with that in mind, uh, and I know you have a presentation and such, that's great, but we just wanted to make sure the record was was clear on that. So if you wanna walk them through Perfect. yeah. More. yeah. Um, so I guess, you know, as you learn, you know, beginning of the year, the town board created a new uh, local law for, for fencing. Deer fence wasn't even part of it before, but that was one of the things that uh, came up. So they, you know, articulated that piece out separately from regular fencing that's across um, the yards and, you know, homes and things like that. Um, so you're looking for a five foot fence um, where, where typically a three foot fence will be allowed in the front yard. And I guess the reason we have to do it in the front yard is more because that's really the only place you can plant because you have fairly dense woods in the backyard um, for your property and it's not, it doesn't bode well for growing. Is, I guess in a sense, is that what we're coming down to? Yeah, that's right. So the, as you can see in the presentation and also on your uh, plot there, um, the perimeter of the yard is actually, we're very grateful that we have a lot of mature trees there and it would be a shame to cut those down for a number of reasons. Um, and as we found, the only real place where we can grow things as we tested over the last year was in the front yard. Uh, <coughs> just enough sun and most vegetables require a little bit more sunlight. Sure, sure. Um, and I guess the reason, you know, in a sense, uh, what in, in that photo approximately how tall is that fencing there. That's about four feet. Four, so four foot, okay. We, um, we've tested out the waters a little bit with it. We actually have two neighbors here tonight. Okay. Um, but So in a sense, from you know, looking at this, um, what's, what's, what's interesting is the grade of your home still sits above this, so it's not like you're looking over a fence, kind of you know, hiding your home. It's still kind of open and inviting the way you're looking at it. And with the, I guess, the open feel of the fencing, because it's, it's deer fence, you can still see through it in a sense. It's not like a stockade fence where it's blocking right. everything. Right. Okay. Um, when looking at this, uh, I think you said uh, approximately 140-something linear feet. I don't remember what the number was exactly. Yeah, that's 135, I think, is what Tell I me estimated. Tell me how big... You know, what, what, what shape does that take? You know, is it, you know, are we looking like a rectangle? So if you... Um, on one of the slides here, there's a... Go yep, up one. Go. So uh, I should have put a northeast-west on this, but I didn't. Um, so the top portion of that picture is facing the um, street for Forest Grove. Okay. The left side there is our, our driveway. Um, and then on the right side is our neighbors, the Paceros. So they're more likely to be affected by this, which is part of the reason we wanted to go around and ask them. Um, but, and then on, on that left side, it's the driveway. So it's not necessarily affecting anybody in the immediate vicinity. But we did want to curve and, and try to break up the rectilinear properties of that fence so it didn't really jut out and sure. blend in with the landscape a little more. Okay, so it'll be still panels. It won't be, a, a, you know, in a sense, a curved, or will it be? You, that's right. I mean, when I sense. drafted that, it was, uh, I'd like it to be curved, but I'm not going to be steam bending every piece of sure. lumber that I put together. So, exactly. yeah. Um, I guess when we look at the, you know the size, how far apart are the posts going to be? Are, are they going to be eight foot, six foot? Or right. Did I? I didn't actually put that. So the spacing is eight feet. Okay. So I guess not. You're not going to see a lot of posts really as you look up on right. it in terms of the size of it. Um, and I guess from that drawing, if I was looking at your house from the front, how wide does that go? Because it's it's difficult to tell from that. Uh, you know, in a sense, you know, am I going from the driveway to your property line, I guess, kind of describe where that is across. If I'm standing from the street side, how, how wide does it really take up? Um, it's, so basically it runs within about five feet of the driveway. Um, and then I think it's about 10 feet from the property line, but you, it's, I don't, it's hard to tell from this image on the other side. Um, I think between our neighbor's driveway and where that would be is about probably 20 feet or more. Okay. Um, you can see there from the property line image there. Yeah. Okay, okay thank you. So. Um, why does it, why, why can't it be four feet? 
why can't it be four foot? My, uh, my question is, the image you said was four feet tall, but you're asking for five? Yeah, so in that image we were testing out, um, originally the plan was to basically build raised beds, and then on the back sides of the raised beds there would be these mesh panels which are used for, you know, lattice for uh, vining vegetables and things. Um, and uh, the four feet, first of all, we didn't get far enough to encapsulate the whole front yard as we had originally intended just because we were busy and we didn't get around to it that season. But also the code had changed um, in January. So where that would have been, I guess, essentially is grandfathered in in that sense. Um, we found that in my presentation, I talk about it, we tried a bunch of different techniques to deter the deer from coming in and having a snack. They seemed to like like the pumpkins a lot. Um, and so uh, we found that, you know, if we put four feet and continued that, A, uh, it wouldn't be in compliance anymore, and B, um, probably wouldn't be adequate to, to deter them to the degree that we're hoping for, so. So the additional height is to keep the deer from coming into the- It's to the discourage them further. We all know deer can hop more than five feet, but um, per the slides, um, we're planning on planting um, native pollinator um, meadow strip right around. And the intention of that is uh, a number of reasons. Um, one is to help break up the visual defense so it doesn't look like this architectural thing in the front yard. Um, it will blend in naturally with other vegetation. Um, the other is that it creates kind of a living wall, so to speak, a, a buffer between the fence and you know deer approaching it. So it provides a, yeah, so you can see the, the sunflowers there, that's last year. Um, these aren't entirely representative. Well, I guess I kind of give you a general idea of how on the left there, the, the fence that's actually underneath that arbor basically blends in with the vegetation, so it's not really visible, which um, to our minds seem like a way to, to lessen the visual impact of the fence. Um, but uh, the other rationale behind it, I think I already talked about, was that it creates a, a living wall slash buffer, and they're not, they we're using deer resistant um, native plants that uh, support pollinators, uh, monarch butterflies, which is in alignment with the mayor's challenge for, for having supporting monarchs in the area. Um, and then local wildlife, native wildlife. So we're trying to kill a few birds, not to sound anti-nature there, but kill a few birds with two, more than one bird with uh, one stone, so. Um. Perfect. Based on your application, when I was reading through it, it sounded like you were very well aware of visual impacts and you know sizes and things like that, that you tried to, even by, by picking five foot, you're like, you know, we could ask for eight, but we're, we're looking for five um, to try to you know maintain that you know impact in terms of you wouldn't really see it plus what you're doing around it you're trying to minimize that as well um, yeah absolutely uh, it's very important uh, we have good relationships with all of our neighbors and we want to maintain that and of course there's also the property value at, you know 10 15 20 years down the road if we move we don't want it to be unappealing to whoever owns the house in the future. That's all I've got, Dan. Yeah, I'll just uh, note that as of the moment, I don't see anybody call in the queue on the phone, nor do I see anybody have submitted an electronic comment. Um, I'm glad you, you made that last point uh, because as this has really uh, boiled down to the way Andres and I gave the prelude, and, and, and Michael, I'm sure, agrees with that, even though I didn't ask you before, I should have. Um, but the code's pretty clear, deer fences aren't to be in the front yard. But the code also allows a deer fence to be eight feet. So you have a deer fence, but it's not nearly eight feet. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's a big factor about whether when we're being asked to allow a deer fence in the front yard, if it were an eight foot fence, <laughs> I, I don't know if you would get it, to be honest with you. Even as nicely uh, camouflaged, if you will, as this looks like. But the fact that it is five feet um, is important in my mind, but perhaps more important is the fact that you have the support of your neighbors. 
Uh, why do I bother going through all this? Because um, I don't want to get a lot of applications for deer fences in front yards when the statute says they, they're not supposed to be in the front yards. Um, and and I, I'll be honest, I was a little bit surprised with the height that you, I'm pleasantly surprised um, because it makes the vote easier from where I'm sitting. But um, five feet, if it's gonna do the job as far as you're concerned because of the steps you're taking, great. Good, good, good for you. But I, I, again, I just wanna emphasize that this is a unique situation where you've taken the extra steps to make sure that any uh, harm to other properties is gonna be reduced, mitigated, if not eliminated by the way that you're gonna cover it. And I, I would suggest that be a part of the, uh, any approval resolution, but also the fact that you went out of your way to make sure that you got the support uh, of your neighbors. That's a big factor in my mind. Yeah, because I think the letter of support had five neighbors, five neighboring properties, and I think you have bas basically that's everybody in your vicinity. Actually, there was one that we didn't get, um, uh, the, the Lembex, Don and Jane, and he actually texted me this evening and said, I'm sorry I wasn't able to do it, and he s said, this is my approval, and I can show you the text message mm -hmm. if you like, but I was actually impressed. A fantastic memory that he was able to remember that. And we've right. got both our neighbors over here, mm -hmm. uh, which is great. Actually, to see you, you know what Thank I would you. ask you to take a screenshot or whatever the kids call it nowadays <laughs> and get that to Andy, if you would, that text message. Uh, it'd oh, be great sure. to have that as part of the record. Okay. When you can. You okay. know, we'll just make it, uh, we uh, take your word for it, no doubt about that, but let's get some kind of copy of it and put it in the file. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, anybody in the audience uh, care to speak about this application? <laughs> Good evening, uh, Christopher Passero, uh, 6 Forest Grove Court, a uh, house directly uh, adjacent and to the north. And I uh, just wanted to say that I'm fully in support. Um, they're, they're great neighbors. And um, I would actually ask for six foot or seven, but because uh, the deer are crazy, they're all over the place and they eat everything. So um, anyway, I, I think they'll do a great job as far as um, you know the, the materials they're using and, and how to uh, make it look uh, as nice as possible, so I'm uh, I'm in favor of it. So yep. thank you. Great. All right. Thanks for coming in. He didn't tell you how we bribed him with free vegetables. So <laughs> well, and maybe some venison. Oh, I, don't, I don't think so. All right. Okay. Anybody else in the audience? Come on up, ma'am. Hi, I'm Megan Meyer, 61 Henderson Drive. I'm not actually in the neighborhood, but we had uh, both Lana and John uh, present to our Healthy Arts Penfield uh, group, uh, which is part of Color Penfield Green, and we were so impressed with um, the idea of um, uh, you know, putting in an attractive um, vegetation around that garden, and it actually is going to um, be part of the action plans that uh, the town can uh, can uh, use for the mayor's monarch pledge. We are actually collaborating with the town with education, and um, we see this as a as a wonderful opportunity to show people what you can do. Um, you know, with an attractive garden and also sustainability with being able to grow your own food and show your own children, you know, where your food comes from other than the grocery store. Um, so I, I think it's wonderful. I just wanted to say Great. that. Well, again, thank, thank you, you for your time. Yeah. Appreciate that. Anyone else in the audience? Okay. All right. Well, then... Uh, let's move the consideration. Perfect. Uh, I move that this is a type two action under Seeker requiring no further review. I second that. Further discussion on Seeker? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And and the merits? Yep, uh, let's see. I'm gonna make a motion to approve um, this variance. Uh, look at this, uh, you know, several factors. Um, one, there's limited opportunities for planting anywhere else at their home. Um, the backyard's um, shaded, and they've proven that because they have an existing garden already that they weren't able to do it in the back. They've tried it in the front. That was the best success. Um, so that leads it to 
the fencing thing where you need to have fencing in this area sometimes to have uh, vegetables that actually you can eat as opposed to be eaten by deer. Um, <laughs> and so that's kind of a requirement for uh, being able to be uh, successful in that. Um, the, f the fencing they chose uh, is fairly, as I say, has a low visual impact. Um, when, I, you know, when I think about deer fence, they could have a three foot fence at the 20 foot line, run right across the whole entire front of the yard, and it could be a, a solid fence and that would be okay. Um, in this case, we're having a fence that's fairly, um, I, I'll say low impact in terms of the, the visual a, um, aspects of it. Um, it appears to be that it's gonna be tastefully designed and uh, I guess uh, accessorized with plants and vegetation around it is the best way to say it in my mind. Um, for that, so I, I don't see that being a, a adverse impact to the neighborhood. Um, if anything, having more planting and growing uh, of things in this area will probably be uh, more beneficial to the environment in this area, so it'll have actually a positive impact. Um, uh, while it's self-created, that's uh, most things are, um, but I don't see this really being a, uh, a substantial ask. So with that, I make a move, motion support to approve. Of, support hmm? of the neighbors. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, the, and the heavy support of basically all neighbors in, the, in, in, in that uh, vicinity. Thank you. I would add Dan's um, contingents that the, the plantings do indeed go in to, to block the fence. So you've, you said you're gonna do it, but we're gonna ask you to actually document, yes, we are committed to doing that. That's fine. Perfect, yeah. All right, so we have a motion to approve. Did we get a second? I'll second. All right, second by Laura. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good luck. Good presentation. Thank you. Thank you. That was an excellent presentation. I like the PowerPoint. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Number, what are we up to? Number four? Yep. Yes. <clears throat> Colin Janik, 32 Laney Road, Rochester, New York, 14620. Requests approval for a conditional use under Section 250-13.3 and section 250-5.7-C1A of the code to allow the operation of a restaurant, the pizza shop, at 1601 Penfield Road. The property is currently or formerly owned by Penfield TK owner LLC and is zoned general business. SBL number 138.08-1-2. forward slash PLZA. This is application number 23Z-0015. And, and before I ask you to put your name in the record, I want to say don't take any offense at this, but we're here with this application tonight. This gentleman is here because even though it's just a change of owner and there's not going to be much change, historically we've had people come in. I, we did it not long ago for a breakfast place in Sunrise Plaza, right? So, yep. okay. Yep. All right, just wanted to, some people might say, what's, why are you putting this guy through this? But don't <laughs> take one offense. Of them. I was one of them, so. <laughs> um, uh, just give us your name and uh, address for the record. Sure, uh, Colin Janik, 32 Laney Road, Rochester. Thank you. Um, so just, I th wanna say it was maybe just short of a year ago, um, we had this uh, existing shop come in for uh, a variance, or I guess, you know, in a sense to, um, Go, go up and uh, open up a pizza shop. So I guess I'll make this simple for you. Um, any changes in uh, egress, um, you know, getting in and out of the building, uh, any changes to that? No. Um, approximately how many people will work there or uh, at any one time? Uh, at, oh. I guess, if, you know, most, the busiest time, how many people would you have working there? Yeah, um, I'd say probably Four. Four people? Okay. Yeah. Um, and will it be dine-in, take-out only? Uh, it's a combination of dine-in, take-out, and I will be adding delivery at okay. some point, too. So approximately how many people would be inside for dine-in? Uh, there's currently um, 24 seats. Okay. So well, let's say approximately 30 people most is what we would see in yeah. this. Uh, so uh, parking lot has adequate facilities for 30 yeah, people, very... probably 15 cars or so, depending on how many yeah. people show up together. It's in Panorama Plaza. There's yep. there's a ton of parking. Plenty of parking when they move the snow, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, any kind of live music um, that will be amplified outside? No. Okay. Um, hours of operation? 
Uh, currently 11 to 7.30, uh, Tuesday through Friday, and then Saturday 3 to 8. I am looking to expand those hours in the coming months, uh, but nothing past uh, 10 p.m., nothing before uh, you know, 6 or 7 a.m. in the morning. Okay, so, so basically that would be your limits in a sense. Uh, yeah. I think most of the plots would probably start shutting down by 9, 30, 10 o'clock anyways. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, anything besides pizza that you're gonna be selling? Yeah, so I'm basically uh, continuing the current menu. Um, really love the stuff there. So it's pizza, it's uh, pasta, fresh made pasta, um, sandwiches, salads. I'm gonna be adding in some baked goods and some prepared foods for grab and go type of things. Perfect. Starving. No, no she's hungry, she got plain. Peanuts First customer, enough. right? Here. Yeah. Pretzels weren't enough. The pretzels um, were good. And that's uh, in the picture here. That's the uh, most likely what the signage will look like. Yeah, currently I do have uh, plans in the coming months to likely change the name, which I know at that time I'll look for a uh, approval for for new signage and things like that. But uh, currently that's uh, what we're operating under. We'll be operating under, and that's okay. the current signage. Yep. yep. Andy, as long as the sign stays within a certain parameter, he doesn't have to come back for that, correct? If, uh, the, if the name changes out no. front? No, he'll get a, just get a sign permit. Yeah, yep. so that'll be easy for you, or easier for you. Um, that's all I've got, Dan. I'm okay. sure the people are writing it online like crazy. <laughs> Wouldn't you be surprised and be eating your words? Yeah. <laughs> I have an order here for a large pepper. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no call-ins, no electronic. Any other questions from the board? Anyone in the audience care to speak about this? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll move forward with a uh, seeker. Yep. Uh, this is. I'm going to move this to type two action under seeker, requiring no further review. Second. Okay. We have a seeker motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, and then I'm going to move to approve, uh, as, as uh, discussed and presented in the application. Uh, really, the only changes that I think really come about are um, the hours of operation. Uh, it sounds like everything is almost identical to what the previous um, approval was uh, just less than a year ago. And uh, there's really uh, no major changes here. So I'm going to move to approve that. I will second that. Uh, motion to approve based upon the minimal changes that are being made, which are noted in the record, and will be part of the approval resolution. Any further comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night. Kevin Schumacher, American Promotional Events, 4003 Helton Drive, Florence, Alabama, 35630. Request a recommendation of approval for the issuance of an itinerant vendor license under section 162-6-E1B and section 162-E2 of the code to allow the sales of sparkling devices at 1990 Brant Point Drive. The property is currently or firmly owned by DeMarco Brant Point LLC and his own general business. SBL number 093.02-1-25.11. This is application number 23Z-0016. Okay, if you can give us your name. Hi, it's Amanda Gump, and my address is 35208 State Route 126 in Carthage. Okay, and uh, just because um, just want to make sure that you state on the record that you are here with the permission of the applicant and all that. Yes, I actually work for American Promotional Events. Yeah, I was looking for a letter, but okay, that's good enough by me. Yep. Great. Well, so a great application. It's thorough. And I noticed you got the letter from Walmart. Uh, this is a this is a pretty much a standing yearly uh, is done. So I have just a couple questions for you. Yes, sir. Any proposed changes? So it looks like the tent, to my recollection, is the same as the same size as it was last year. Yes. Uh, any difference in in the items that would be being sold? Nope. Everything is going to remain the same, and the operator that runs the tent for us is the same as well. Gotcha. Uh, I did notice um, there was only. I did one question. There was only one fire extinguisher on one side of the tent. So there's actually going to be three extinguishers. Two are going to be water cans. One is an ABC. 
Um, if the board wishes to have an additional ABC, we can absolutely provide that. I was thinking maybe if you could have one at each side of the tent, that definitely. Would, just from a, from a safety standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I, I don't really have a lot of questions because this is identical to last year. I'm assuming, again, no, no loud music, there won't be right. bright lights, hours of operation will be the same. Yes. Um, so I don't have any I other I think the one thing I'll note is uh, typically in the past, we always had a whole lot of signs and things that were out there that we usually reduced back down. So I just want to make a note that whatever we've had in the past for those limitations um, to make sure that carries forward. So if you need that, we can probably provide that for you of what we've approved previously. I believe it was two signs previously. I think so. Yes. Yep, it was two signs. That's correct. And I will make sure that that's noted to the yeah. operator. Perfect. That's all okay. I've got. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? I don't, I don't see any electronic uh, submissions, nor yeah. is anybody waiting on the phone and... Are the phones exploding? No, no. but uh, <laughs> I suppose you guys if, have a right to say something as a citizen if you want, but they're both saying, nobody in the audience can, uh, cares to speak <laughs> about this, is my point. So let's go ahead and with its consideration, starting with the seeker. Yeah, so from, from the seeker, I would say it's a type two, requiring no additional. I'll second. All right, we have a motion on seeker and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, now the merits. Uh, this is um, this is established. It's done yearly. Um, it's done by a vendor that that's that's um, known and has a consistent approach to it. There's no changes from what we've approved in the past, and so um, and they will add the additional fire extinguisher just from a safety perspective. So I would I would grant approval for this. I'll second. All right, we have a motion to approve and a second. I just. Any, now this is, uh, I don't know how many years in a row, and then we also have Panorama. I haven't heard of any issues whatsoever. I think people enjoy the opportunity to be able to buy it, and uh, okay, good. No good. complaints. Great. A motion to approve in a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, keep up the good work. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Enjoy your evening. You too. All right. I think that was the last application. And again, nothing on the computer, so um, good work. We will stand adjourned. Thank you all very much. Have a good night. Bye-bye.